So Jamal Nyas here at Bellator London with Peter Queeley. Now you've got an absolutely huge fight coming up at Bellator Dublin in September. Benson Henderson, I mean, what a win that would be for yourself uh, in the build-up to that Patricky Pitbull trilogy. Just talk to me about how big of a fight this is for you. This is the one that gets me that trilogy, I think. I think if I can put Benson away, I'll fight Patricky again for the belt, so it couldn't be bigger than that. When you look at what Benson's achieved in the sport, how would you compare him in his Bellator run compared to the UFC? You know, he's beaten the, guy, the likes of Frankie Edgar, Nate Diaz. He was a tremendous champion and, and he's gone on to achieve great things in Bellator as well. Yeah, I think his Bellator run has been slightly disappointing, but only because he's fought a lot of it at welterweight. When he's been at lightweight, his natural weight class, he's looked, he's looked great. Um, so that's what I'm fighting him at, unfortunately. It's not welterweight, so he's going to look great. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I want to fight the legend, the best version of him possible, and that's what I think I'm going to get. I mean, last time out, you know, last year you had, you had two wars with, with, with Patriki. Obviously, in Dublin, what an atmosphere. Obviously, didn't didn't go your way, but what a tremendous occasion that was for, for the sport in Dublin with yourself and James Gallagher. Obviously, he's fighting in September as well. Just talk to me about how much confidence you gain from that first fight when you look ahead to a trilogy down the line. Yeah, like the second fight was bittersweet it was a kind of a great moment in my career because of all the hoo-ha with the event and everything but obviously I didn't get my hand raised so this is bitterly disappointing but I've beaten him yeah. already and I know this and I know I can beat him and even that fight even though he did very well and he beat me fair and square I would bet all the money in my bank account that I would beat him if I fought him a third time this is just how I felt in the first six or seven minutes in that fight I felt like it was going very well for me I feel like I was a few minutes away from getting him over the edge and getting him tired and that's that's how I ultimately beat him in the first fight was kind of wearing on him that way um, so I'll, I'll have uber confidence when I do face him again and I can't wait for this that picture from the first one as well you covered in blood that's like an all-time classic picture definitely from from last year that was such a classic picture how much do you love the violence in there and, and just being covered in, in your own blood and your opponent's blood just look at that picture it gives you the answer a big yeah. smile on my face I'm actually looking at James as that picture is taken and I'm, I remember he was laughing his ass off yeah. at the cage as I was walking back and then I was laughing as I was walking back because we just knew this is going perfectly yeah. this is exactly what we want just the grittier and dirtier it gets the, the better for me um, so you know I love this kind of a fight and I've enjoyed fighting Patricky I must give him his dues as well you know I've enjoyed fighting him immensely over the last two fights because you know he's a real fighter he comes to take you out he's not trying to score points he's not trying to wear the clock down he's trying to kill you and this is, these make for exciting fights, and these, these are the fights I get up for, and they're easy, for, easy to train for these ones. Because obviously there was a bit of needle after that first one, um, with, with, with the way that it finished, he seemed to come up with his end of the story, which you weren't happy with, but obviously, like you said, there is ultimately respect between you both. Um, do you still feel like there is a bit of needle after, after what's gone on uh, between the, the two fights? Yeah, there'll, like, there, there'll always be a bit of needle. You know, when you fought a guy twice like this and a win and a loss, it's always going to be a little bit. But we had a nice moment after the second fight. We had a nice moment after the first fight too. Mm. You know what I mean? But, you know, there's always going to be, be a bit of controversy when you fight someone. And he was unhappy because, you know, he felt like he should have been allowed to continue in the first one. And I think he should have been allowed to continue, to be honest. I think it was a kind of a quick stoppage. But this wouldn't have changed the course of the fight. Can you imagine he'd, he'd have hold the size of a 50 pence piece in his head? Joe, coming out for a third round of me, I would have killed him. Um, so it was good they stopped it, but I can understand why he was upset. Um, you know, other than that then, there's no needle really. I just want to fight him again. I just want to settle this. I know I can beat him. Um, I want that third fight to really put a, put a, put a stamp on this. Who's the best man? Uh, obviously, one of uh, Benson Henderson's old opponents, uh, Michael Chandler, he just uh, shook up the world with the, with the kick over Tony Ferguson arguably the knockout of the year in the sport is that a guy that you're looking at and thinking I wish I would have fought him in his Bellator run because he was, he was real close for that happening had you had he stayed and you'd been in the position that you was last year you probably would have fought wouldn't you we would have for sure fought I think if he'd stayed by now or you know and, and he was a guy I wanted to fight his name was never really mentioned we never kind of crossed paths in that in that regard there was I don't think that fight was ever close to being being made but like you said if you were still here for sure we'd be one or two spots away from each other in the rankings right now and we'd probably who knows maybe I'd be fighting him now instead of Benson but he's doing really well congratulations to him um, great to watch he was always great to watch um, and he's really after kicking on in the last you know, 18 months, so fair play to him. In terms of your recovery as well, obviously tricky beginning to the year for yourself, but having a fight booked in, that's obviously the motivation for you now to look, look uh, down the line for that. What was the beginning of the year like for yourself? 
Yeah, not good. I, I you know, I, I broke my rib before the Kane Musa fight, so I had to pull out of that one. And then I went to, you know, I've had a nagging shoulder injury with a long time, with about 18 months. My second camp with Patricky was plagued with injuries, to be honest. Now, I still prepared well, and I, I don't think it really affected me in the fight, but it was just one of these annoying things. So I wanted to get that fixed. So I got surgery um, a couple of months ago on that, and I'm still recovering from this now. It's, you know, it was a pretty serious surgery. Uh, so I haven't had a good start to the year, but I'm, I'm hoping to have a good end. Obviously, we mentioned before, there is a bit of needle between you two af af after that occasion in February. You obviously focusing on the title hunt. You've got a, a fight announced now. Down the line, is that something that you would like to settle? Because obviously when there's back and forth between fighters, if it isn't, if it isn't settled, there's always that what if, what, what would have happened? And you're so big over in Ireland, Kane's so big over in England. It, it would be a huge fight. You know, a lot of people are fans of both of you guys. Is that something that you still like to settle down the line? Yeah, perhaps. We'll see what happens. Do you know what I mean? Right now, no, because it doesn't make any sense. I'm fighting Benson Henderson next, you know, former world champion, one of the biggest names in the sport. It would be a huge step back to go chasing the Kane fight now. Like, that fight was kind of made because, you know, it was kind of a case. I felt like they were almost giving me a setup fight to set me up for a big fight at the end of the year. That's how it felt to me. Um, but now that it fell through, I, I still want to just go ahead with my plan and have my big fight at the end of the year. I don't need to chase this. This was, this was more of a big fight for him, more than it was a big fight for me, to be honest. Um, but look, all the best to him. I don't, there's not really any needle, to be honest. I don't really care. I hope I wish him well. Um, and if I meet him down the line, I meet him down the line, and we can settle it then. It's definitely not a negative for either of you to have that as a potential matchup down the line, though, given the expansion Bellator's adding Europe, to have two European guys, Irish versus Englishmen, it's, it's definitely a good one to have it in the pocket for down the line. Um, you yourself as well, you pushed yourself out of your comfort zone a few years ago, didn't you, when you went over to Fight Nights Global, something that not a lot of fighters would have done from, from this side of the world. How much of a great learning experience was that for you and um, the tools that you've developed since, since those days? Yeah, it was the making of me, you know. Um, it was a risky move. That's why no one does it because you're, you're going into a very hostile environment fighting extremely tough fighters that nobody, nobody knows. This is the worst part of these, these Russian regions. They're all animals, but no one really knows them until they get to a big show and then you know them. Um, but, you know, I really am glad I did it. I did very well over there and it, it, it really hardened me as a fighter. And that's why I'm ready here now on the world stage to be taking these big fights because I did that in my earlier in my career. And a lot of younger guys, they could, they could learn a bit from that. You know, I know you kind of they want to pad the record a little bit and be a bit careful. But if you don't kind of test yourself at some stage, you won't be ready when you get to these big fights. Um, so that's, I feel like it paid off for me. Maybe a bit of a risky strategy, but I feel like it paid off for me. So that's something that you would definitely recommend to younger fighters to go and push yourself in an organization like that. And, you know, Russians are, are, are arguably running MMA at the moment and they're, well, they're definitely up there with the Brazilians, the Irish obviously. Um, is that something that you would recommend for younger guys to push themselves over in that region? Yeah, honestly, I, I, I probably wouldn't recommend that. That was a bit too risk-reward, yeah, yeah, but I would certainly recommend them to take hard fights. You know, you see some guys and they kind of, the fights they're taking are just too easy. And then when they get, when the, when the rubber meets the road and they, they meet a, a Peter Queeley or a Patricky or whoever it is, they're not ready. And that's it. So, you know, you need to be careful with this. You need to be clever, but you need to also know that when you, the wolf is at the gate and you're having those big fights that you can fight him. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what I'd recommend. Test yourself. Maybe not as extreme as that, but, you know, you have to test yourself. I know you've been a massive part of Conor McGregor's journey. Um, his return is shrouded in mystery. Just as a, as a fight fan yourself, who would you like to see Conor face on his return? Um, Put you on the spot here. Yeah. Uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, just for the fun of it, I would love to see him fight. Um, he's so big right now. You want to see him in the flesh. He's enormous. So I think you throw him in with Usman and, and go for the welterweight belt yeah. and watch everyone go crazy and get so mad at this. <laughs> but this would be fun and, and it's such a good fight. No, yeah. Can yeah. Well, he, he, or, of course you can, but it's yeah. hard. You know what yeah. I mean? He's big. He's big and strong now. He's enjoying himself. He's living a good life. Um, but he's in shape. He's in good shape. Um, so probably just for, you know, if I wanted to have some fun and, and have a really fun fight, that's probably the one. Um, but there's many fights there. You know, I know Chandler called him out at 170. Um, I'm sure many of these lightweight guys will fight him at any weight he wants, let's be honest. So um, there'll, be, there'll be whatever fight he wants will be there for him.